Test one, two, we got some earnings today, baby. Bam, bam, by far one of the most fascinating times to be an investor because you will be tested on your due diligence in these companies, in these black swan events. But luckily for you, I sat down, I did all the homework, I went through the airlines, I went through the banks, and we're also gonna talk about one of my favorite companies, being in Johnson & Johnson, as I'm gonna give you the overview highlight I think you need to know, and then of course, I'm gonna offer you my humble opinion on what I think of this third quarter. So in the clarity of my transparency and all the homework, I do smash that like button and let's jump <laughs> oh, Welcome back my passive income investors alike now do this with me Take a deep breath because there's nothing more terrifying going into Halloween than looking at these third quarter earnings. And to kick this off, we're going to roll back a little bit in time to what you might recall being the greatest investor of all time, Warren Buffett, taking a major loss on Delta Airlines, selling out, I think, around 24, 25 bucks a share, in which it is trading up a little bit from there. But as we could have expected, they posted earnings today with major, major losses going on here, guys. Just taking a quick look, they lost $6.9 billion per share. And I don't think I actually have to go through any more of their earnings because oh god i wouldn't touch these with a 10-foot pole right now and yeah the airlines are going to be burning for a while guys they are losing tens of millions of dollars a day and it is likely to continue moving forward as we all heard in donald trump's tweets that obviously they're going to be giving out more bailouts for these companies to keep them holding on until we can get to the other side and you might recall with like southwest airlines and delta even the ceos took major pay cuts and some of them aren't even receiving paychecks right now until they can survive this so what can we take away from the airlines that we can all learn as investors well basically put cash in the bank and protect yourself with an emergency fund, something that every basic person should be following as a fundamental financial rule. But I think the airlines thought they were above that as they were doing a lot of share buybacks and handing out those dividends like they were sweet cake pies or something because everyone needs to travel and nobody could have saw this black swan event coming, crushing them into the toilet. I don't know what else to say. It will take years for these balance sheets to fully recover from these losses and the impairment charges that they are currently taking on. But we kind of expected that to happen. So let's push that aside and get into the part of the economy that really represents what is going on to individuals like you and me because we get to see as we all run our finances through these major banks today we had jp morgan chase post its earnings and it is trading down 1.5 percent today even though if you looked up the eps it smashed it out of the water and you're like how is it trading down when it crushed the earnings as i told you the only fundamental thing you should be following is those revenues what they're actually making and are those revenues growing and how much is it costing them to make that and getting into the financial results some of the stuff i would like to share with you guys and why they were able to crush the EPS had to do with them cutting back on the loan loss provisions. And as you might be aware, and if you're not, loan loss provisions isn't actual money lost. It is money they put aside that they earn to protect themselves against any loan losses that they may incur from people not paying their mortgages or paying their credit cards off. And just taking a look at the net revenue going from Q3 of 2019, in which they did $30 billion going into Q3 of 2020. In comparison, they only did 29 point nine billion so we're seeing about a loss of a hundred million dollars nothing that equates to any substantial difference in the revenue but we aren't seeing real revenue growth in this quarter now just take a look in q3 of 2019 they were building up some own loss provisions they put 1.5 billion away and obviously in q2 of 2020 the pandemic hit the federal reserve got really scared told the banks look you're not increasing dividends you're not doing share buybacks and right now you guys need to bank as much capital as humanly possible in case the entire economy implodes because we do not want to experience another two 2008. And sure enough, in Q2 of 2020, we can see they put aside $10.4 billion, which they basically equate as a loss to their earnings per share, which is why we see if we look at the earnings per share, there was a rapid drop off in the Q2 of 2020. But if we take a look at those earnings per share right now in Q3 of 2020, they're sitting at $2.92, which is way more than any analyst was expecting because we didn't realize they were going to cut back massively on these loan loss provisions in which they only put $611 million a Side. So, I mean, that's a big difference from the $10 billion they put aside just the quarter before. But still, with the uncertainty moving forward, the CEO was still quoted in the conference call this morning saying that they wanted the Federal Reserve and the government to keep issuing stimulus because that will protect their bottom line and also that part of the economy that still doesn't have jobs, which is primarily related to the service sector, like myself being an entertainer or if you're a bartender in restaurants. I mean, those are the people that are going to get slammed into the ground. It's going to be neat to see going into this election as Trump didn't want to issue any more stimulus, but I 
think the economy may or may not need it. It is really hard to get a full grasp by taking a look at these earnings here, folks. But, but the neatest thing by far is when you look through these bank earnings, you can actually see all the different parts of the credit loans they hand out and what parts of the economy are getting affected the hardest. And taking a look at the average loans that they've been handing out are down 7% year over year. So there are less people taking out loans. But as we all could figure out, you know, people are being a little bit more scared or banking more money, stacking up that cash just to protect themselves against the uncertainty. As we can see, the average deposits were up 28% year over year. They saw active mobile customers up 10% year over year. So a lot more people doing, you know, online banking through their phone apps. Now, client investment assets were up 11% year over year. Pretty incredible stuff. More people are actually investing apparently. And then credit card sale volume was down 8%. So this is a really defined way of seeing what exactly is going on in the economy. Now they break down like auto loans, business loans, and you can go through all that. I'll try and leave all the links in the description below. But generally we can see people are using less credit cards, they're taking out less loans, and they're stacking up way more cash. Now taking a look at another bank, we're talking about Citigroup, another one that posted earnings today, folks, where we're going to see a very similar resemblance to what we just saw with JP Morgan. But what I think is so funny is everybody wants to get on this as quick as possible. And if you look at the most recent headline, it says Citigroup stock surges after profit and revenue beats, um, which sounds very exciting until you scroll up and take a look at the stock trading down 4.2%. So unfortunately for you, Market Watch, you, you, you kind of jumped the gun there pre-market and you were terribly wrong because again, even though they beat the EPS, Let's get into these books, guys, and show you the similarities. Because taking a look at the total revenues going into Q3 of 2020, they did about $17.3 billion. But against Q3 of 2019, where they did $18.5 billion, they have lost over a billion dollars in revenue, which isn't good. Like I told you guys, there's nothing fun about seeing revenue declines because that is where the fundamental underlines of your business operates. Don't get caught up in these EPS. They lie to you, folks. But just taking a look at where these credit losses really took up was in Q1 of 2020. 20, obviously going into March when they had to pick these up, we saw them do about $7 billion. And then going into Q2 of 2020, they did $7.9 billion in credit losses. But then finally, in the third quarter, they stepped back by almost $5 billion, a little over $5 billion, in which they only put away $2.2 billion. A lot more than JP Morgan did, but still a lot less than they have been doing in the past. But leading down to those bottom line diluted earnings per share, where we can see they've done a dollar. 40 beating the consensus, but compared to Q3 of 2019, they did $2.08. So they are still seeing a relative loss of about 60 cents per share compared to the year prior. Now, what do I think about these banks in general, guys? I still love the banks, but I would still prefer the Canadian banks. Being a Canadian investor, it gives me some simplicity in tax time, as many of you know. It does not mean that I hate the U.S. banks by any means. I think these companies are trading at incredible discounts, and we just have to wake up on the other side of this pandemic. And if you are looking for some incredible dividend income and you are willing to wait this out for another year or two, I think buying into some of these banks wouldn't be the worst decision. Though, again, I would still prefer the Canadian counterparts. Come down to your own opinion, but I always recommend getting a diversified portfolio of banks. And because I am so young and if you have a long time horizon like I do you're not going to do any real wrong in my opinion picking these up now moving into stocks that I actually love ones that don't scare the crap out of me at all of course that is Johnson & Johnson one of the few stocks that I said I'm willing to throw endless amounts of money at can sleep easy at night don't have to think too much about it and getting into their earnings because for some reason they're trading down 2.8 percent today nobody really knows why I'm going to try and throw you some information that might conclude some evidence to why they're dropping but overall the financial results as I told you guys don't look at the EPS, look at the reported sales or the revenues in which in 2019 for the third quarter end, they did 20.7 billion compared to 20 20 where they have grown their revenues by about 500 million dollars sitting at 21 billion dollars in revenue guys and this still comes as a bit of a surprise because we all know a lot of people are having troubles getting in to do surgeries right now and getting in to see their doctors which we can actually see if we scroll down here the medical device sales which is a huge part of their business 30 percent of their business is still down quite a bit in 2020 because in 2019 they did 6.3 billion in medical device sales compared to 2020 for the third quarter where they did 6.1 billion kind of sucks but luckily the other half of their business is what is driving the current revenue growth in which we can see consumer health and pharmaceuticals so these are many of the products you might be aware of with, with things like Tylenol bandages you know we all know what Johnson & Johnson
Johnson does. And we can see both of these segments had growth. Uh, compared to 2019, consumer health had 3.4 billion. And in 2020, they saw 3.5 billion. Pharmaceuticals in 2019, 10.8 billion against pharmaceuticals in 2020, where they did 11.4 billion. Clearly pharma being the largest growth sector for them. Now, obviously we're not talking about explosive revenue growth here, but we're talking about a company that is still able to grow a fundamental essential service to society in the midst of one of the worst health crises we have ever faced in my current lifetime on this planet. So I love this company. I got about 12,000 sitting in here. I would literally have no problem throwing more at it. It is something I recommend everybody have in their portfolio, but why the heck are they down on their earnings here, folks? And a lot of people are speculating it has a lot to do with the current vaccine that they were testing out on 60,000 people across, I think, like eight different nations, which was showing some pretty incredible results in the beginning. But unfortunately, had they had to temporarily halt uh, testing their vaccines because with one of their patients, apparently they saw adverse side effects, which they kind of bury under the rug because they're not actually showing us what exactly happened here. But according to this article, Johnson & Johnson has temporarily paused its clinical trials for the potential novel CV virus vaccine after unexplained illness in a study participant, the company said on Monday. In a statement posted to its website, the company said the person's illness is being reviewed and evaluated by an independent data safety monitoring board along with the company's own physicians. But however, I'm not that versed in the pharmaceutical sector and I didn't realize this is apparently a pretty common thing because as the, I know this headline sounds really slammed like oh my god this headline is terrifying but really the company assured that such serious adverse events are not uncommon in clinical trials it's also not clear if the illness came from the vaccine candidate itself or from a placebo so what the what? I mean, we don't even know if it was from a placebo. So if you're handing out placebos to somebody and they get deathly ill for some unforgodly reason, they actually shut down the entire clinical trials. So we really don't know what's going on here, but my goodness, these people like to make money on these headlines. So unfortunately, if it bleeds, it leads, and that is what currently might be driving down the stock price. But we'll find out, I'm sure, in the coming weeks um, whether it was related to the vaccine. And thank God there are still many of other companies out there that are still showing a lot of positive signs because just like you, I want to wake up on the other side of this pandemic, hopefully in the next six months or by next summer, so I can go back to living my normal life and, heck, maybe even start performing again as a magician here, guys. Uh, the job that I completely lost thanks to all this crap. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't feel as bad as the airlines do, and I certainly don't feel as bad as things like car Carnival Cruise do. I didn't talk about these earnings too much because they were posted on October 8th, but as we can expect, just like the airlines, guys, I just wanted to throw this in here. Carnival Cruise lost $2.9 billion. It was really ironic because going into the end of this year, I was really seriously debating on performing on cruise ships because they are some of the highest paid contracts for entertainers. And me and my girlfriend still joke today that super glad I didn't take on any of those contracts or I might've been one of those people stuck on those boats. But these are currently the earning reports that I found super fascinating. There are many other companies Companies posting and if I missed something that you found interesting I'd love to know what you think in that comment section below if you appreciate the homework I do got any questions I'd love to hear about it so stay cool stay awesome and I look forward to catching up with you guys tomorrow